Hello and welcome to one of the read-alongs from part of my blog, How to Transform Your Body, Mind, and Life with a Fork and Knife. I don't know about you, but I hear this one all the time. You will die if you don't eat carbs. They're essential to a balanced diet, a la big food, and unfortunately, most doctors. Now, I say you won't die. In fact, you may feel better than ever if you dial back the garbage. All right, because it is common knowledge, we've all heard this, that carbohydrates provide glucose for use within the human body. Now, most cells, they use that glucose as a fuel source. When the body is glucose driven, it needs it and lots of it. Now, the carbohydrate or the carb is the easiest macronutrient to break down into usable fuel along with the messiest. So think coal when you think carbs. All right, now the dietary guidelines for Americans, it recommends 45 to 65% of our daily energy. Those needs should be met, should be met through ingesting carbs. Now I'll go into a little more of the details behind that in time with you all through this blog. But as you may have seen in these old time movies, you know, where they're shoveling the coal into the train's furnace and they're just all these billows of dark, thick smoke and intense heat. Keeping that energy up requires literally a ton of coal. So it's similar when it comes to your body's need for fuel. When it's burning inefficient carbs or coal, it requires an immense amount of them. So as you burn more and more carbs, more and more junk is released in the process. Now, unlike the train, the junk is trapped in the body and now has to be either used up or stored. Much of that leftover junk, it's stored in body fat. So burning carbs for fuel, it results in an increased amount of reactive oxygen species, or ROS for short, also known as oxidation, which is like internal rusting of the body and its parts. And this, this my friends, is why antioxidants are recommended when you're carb fueled. Okay, so unlike the process of burning fat for fuel, which I liken to the body's very own version of jet fuel, a primary carb burner is left sputtering and dependent upon frequent shovels of fuel or coal uh, or carbs. <laughs> so in his well-referenced article, Metabolic Effects of the Very Low Carbohydrate Diets, the Misunderstood Villains of Human Metabolism, Dr. Mananin, he established that reducing carb intake triggers a beneficial physiological state known as ketosis. Now this paper was written in, or published I should say in 2004. The data was taken from years prior. So this ketosis is a metabolic default setting where ketones flow from the liver and spare the need for glucose metabolism, providing an alternate source of fuel for the body and the brain. Think jet fuel. Now, ketosis is a natural state of the body. We are actually born in ketosis. It's our normal state as newborns and when breastfed. Now, we introduce formula and that all changes drastically. And I suggest this is one of the main reasons breastfeeding is the better choice for a newborn when, it, when doing so is readily available. Now, I don't judge for I had to bottle feed my babes in addition to breastfeeding. So I was at that time in my life, I was so stressed. And I believe that was the reason I didn't produce enough milk for them to sustain. If I only knew now what I knew then, what I know now, I'd have gone keto two decades ago. So Mananin's report, he further states that there are no clear requirements for dietary carbohydrates in human adults. That's pretty, that's pretty profound. So he further notes that ketosis may offer therapeutic effects for various different disease states, those that are common and those that are rare. Now, since that 2004 publishing, tremendous amounts of research have come out showing that he was absolutely spot on. Now, he further comments on a landmark study that showed a very low carb diet resulted in significant reduction of body fat and a naturally accompanying increase in bot lean body mass. And this was done in male subjects of normal body weight at that point for the retaining muscle mass. This is a really good thing because we want to have as much lean body mass that our skeletal structure and our heart can support in our vascular system. We want to have lean mass as we age. That's very important in the aging process and not, um, not 
decreasing in our abilities over time. Whole different, blo whole different blog post for that one. All right, so there are, and he also notes there are absolutely no scientific studies that prove carbs are essential or that they balance out a diet. And there have been none since then either. So we need foods that have carbs, like vegetables and fruits. Now, FYI, I am specifically referring to the non-GMO, unadulterated versions because they provide essential nutrients and fiber. Make no mistake, it is not the carbohydrate that is essential. It is the nutrient alongside the, chyber, the carbohydrate, and it's the fiber. So these are the extent for our need for carbohydrate-containing foods. Who are those words together? So on a side note, now Mother Nature does not package carbs and fats like they do in the labs of big food. These frankenfoods are absolutely not necessary and should be avoided at all costs. So I find this amusing. I always get a kick out of this. So I tell someone they need to break up with carbs and all of a sudden they're a researcher. Now mind you, they have never researched anything related to what they eat before. Not once did they look into the crap contained in that family sized bag of Doritos that they polish off binge watching This Is Us. They didn't look into the artificial colors, nor the artificial flavorings, nor the GMO crops, nor the nasty canola oil, which is often disguised as vegetable oil. Nor had they taken the time to look at simple biochemistry since they were in high school, and now they're doing their research. So I find this absolutely ridiculous behavior. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, allow me to illuminate the reason that doing my research amusement amuses me. So unlike someone who has years of experience culling through statistics, reading scientific papers, deciphering good data from junk, uncovering the money trail and other skills required for doing proper research when it comes to human health, see your chances of coming to a correct conclusion are little to none, right? So it's like me <laughs> doing research on what TV to buy. HD, LED, OLED, XYZ, I mean, seriously, I don't know one from the other, nor do I really care to become an expert, but I do want to make the right decision for me. So I would look to my trusted tech advisors for guidance and ultimately I decide, but I take their wisdom into consideration. This is how I suggest you approach the topic of healthy eating. Look to those who know what they're talking about. And when a deeper dive is required, they have the connections to those above their pay grade, as I say, because these trusted advisors, they speak the language. They can decipher truth from BS and they have a passion for educating others. All right, shameless plug time. Pick me as your healthy eating advisor. I've got a team of experts at my disposal and you can, you can too, if you become a member of my private Facebook group, Dr. Sam's Rock Solution. I'll have a link right below with this video. So let's bring this full circle back to carbs and glucose. The presence of glucose directs the body to produce insulin. It's just how it happens. And it's rather predictable in a relatively healthy human. Now emphasis on relatively healthy. As long as the body can accurately meet the level of glucose in the blood with insulin production, all is well. But for a whopping 35% of people over 40, it does not happen in this coordinated fashion. In fact, since I wrote this, it's gone up even higher than 35% because we don't have accurate statistics because insulin, resting insulin is not regularly, um, regularly tested for. You know, we've got fasting glucose, but we don't have fasting insulin. So the challenge here is these people are insulin resistant and they don't respond to insulin as designed. See, most people producing adequate insulin, so the pancreas works, mind you, but the cells are in, they're basically ignoring the insulin. Therefore, the pancreas ramps up production. All right, you're not paying me any mind, I'll just make more. Surely you'll listen to me then, that's the pancreas. So, uh, yet again, this message falls on deaf ears, and that's the problem. So it's sort of like selective hearing that we develop as parents or partners. Am I right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've all done it. All right. So many of us, if not most who are afflicted with this, don't even know it. 
The likelihood of becoming insulin resistant increases as the years roll by. And when the body is ignoring the orders from insulin, it is inefficiently utilizing its primary fuel source. This happens when one is carb or glucose fueled, such as when following the dietary guidelines for Americans. Remember the 45 to 65% of our energy daily should come from carbohydrates? Oh boy. So it doesn't happen like this when you're fat fueled. Now to review the pancreas, it amps up insulin production and it is further ignored. Therefore the body stores more and more body fat erroneously because that is what excess insulin in the system does. Now constantly being bathed in an insulin bath has its deleterious effects on cells as well. It is highly inflammatory. Now signs of insulin resistance, there are many, but they can manifest as things like belly fat, getting hangry, cravings for food high in sugar because you're on this roller coaster of glucose, no glucose, too much insulin, it's going to drive it too low. It's unbelievable. Another thing, polycystic ovarian syndrome, known as PCOS, you might hear those that term, high blood pressure, hair loss on the scalp for both men and women, swollen ankles, even skin tags to name a few. Now when you look and ask around, it is evident that we are on the razor's edge of a national, really global health crisis. And ground zero is insulin resistance. You need to look into that term, understand what it means, and you will start to see the signs everywhere. And you might even see them in your own mirror. So warning, my inner geek girl is coming out right now. Insulin does a whole host of things in the body, and it's one of the main regulating hormones. Now, if you're over 40, your hormones have been blamed for pretty much everything that ails you. Am I right? Must be your hormones. Now, often we think only of the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, uh, progesterone, when we think hormones, right? And especially if you're a woman, yeah, everything gets blamed on your hormones, like your whole life. Um, so, but there are many more than those. And insulin is a major player. When the body stops listening to insulin, it is nothing short of disastrous. Now, technically, you do suffer from a hormone problem, just not one of the few in the crosshairs of conventional wisdom. One of the crux manifestations is that insulin resistance leads to blood glucose levels not being maintained in a healthy range. This leads to metabolic syndrome, which ultimately leads to diabetes type 2. And that's usually within five years of metabolic syndrome setting in, as well as a whole host of other named chronic diseases. In fact, I'll venture to say that hyperinsulinemia, which is too much insulin in the blood, a chronic, meaning a long, long term, and we don't have exact times. It could be days, well, it could be months, years, decades that it's been going on in the background before it's ever even found. So look to your body's relationship with insulin. Does it have selective hearing? Your body's response to insulin is the key to growing wiser, not just chronologically older. You do not have to age like your parents and you can completely opt out of that future. I will show you how. I want you to join that private Facebook group and you can do so right through the blog or the link that I'll have below this video. So let's stack the health deck in your favor together, and it starts with accurate information. If you do a health search or, you know, search on even insulin resistance, you're going to find, number one, you'll find a bunch of drug advertisements. Um, drugs are not the answer when it comes to insulin resistance. If you have a body that's producing insulin, you need to get your body more sensitive to it. And the way you do that is you cut out the garbage. That It's just plain and simple. You have to decrease that and then allow your body to go in and start using up the glucose that's in there. That will bring that insulin level down, down, down to a reasonable amount, then eventually a functional amount, and then eventually just exactly what your body needs, which is very little. And it all, again, it starts with accurate information upon which you take action, right? So recap, there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. The overconsumption of carbs has created a backlash of our health on many levels. Excessive carb consumption over an extended period of time can lead to insulin resistance. In fact, some kids are, I, I would venture to guess that they are born 
set up to be insulin resistant within maybe a decade. And that, that is a troubling, troubling statistic because di di diabetes type two, remember that used to be called adult onset diabetes? Can't call it that anymore because kids are getting it. It's off the charts unbelievable. But this insulin resistance, this is the crux. It leads to metabolic syndrome, which then leads to type two diabetes. And now there's a type three diabetes. I don't know if you've heard this. It actually shouldn't technically be called type three. It should be called diabetes of type two diabetes of the brain, because that's what it is. And that's Alzheimer's. I've written on that as well in here. But the alternate fuel source that we need to be looking to is fat. Being fat fueled leads to a beneficial state of ketosis. Ketosis is a natural metabolic state for the human body and mind. So using healing fats for fuel is like burning jet fuel. All right, so when you find this blog, which I will link to again in the show notes here, please go in and register with me at Dr. Sam's Rock Solution. I'll ask you two questions. That information is kept with me personally, I'm the only admin on this page, um, but I would love to have you join us and join the conversation. Ask me your questions. I'm here to help you. All right. Thanks for watching.